Hello viewers, my name is Alan and welcome to my home workshop. In this video I want to talk about um, how I fitted a 3-axis DRO to my 1950s English milling machine. So I bought this old girl um, at a deceased uh, estate um, sale I guess. It's made by the Elliott Machine Company in England and I traced its uh, actual date of manufacture to 1950. It's branded Victoria Mill, but I believe similar machines sold elsewhere in the world might have been labelled Elliott Machine Tool. But it's a pretty good quality machine. Uh, it's actually a universal milling machine, which means that the, um, the table can actually rotate. So if we look back around here, we see here and here, we can slacken those nuts off and the table rotates here so you can set the the table the direction of travel at an angle to the milling cutter now the main purpose of this video is to talk about fitting a DRO to this machine and the fact that the table rotates made it a particular challenge to find ways to attach the scales and also to cable it up so I'll be talking about that Attaching the uh, readout was relatively simple, but uh, I didn't do that the way a lot of people seem to do it, uh, so I'll talk about that as well. Um, the controls on this machine are unlike many machines of its era. You have these rotating wheels here for speeds and feed selection. The machine does have, through this shaft drive, um, uh, mechanical motion for all three directions up down forwards and sideways with a pretty good range of feeds and speeds um, the machine came with although it's not visible in any of these pictures it came with uh, a vertical milling head which attaches here this slides right back remove this this slides right back and the vertical head goes here and that head's a universal head as well. I might uh, include a picture of that later. But the machine itself is in excellent condition when I got it, it still is. You can see that um, the, uh, there's still scraping visible in various places on the machine. It certainly has not been used, I don't think, in a production situation where it's been used for many hours, can, or you know, day in, day out for a long time, and getting a lot of wear. Um, so all in all it's, it's pretty good and this my first milling machine I was uh, quite happy to get it I did later on buy another milling machine a typical sort of Bridgeport type pattern machine um, because the one limitation of the Victoria is that it doesn't have um, a quill down feed on the vertical head Otherwise, I would have been quite happy just to have that as my only milling machine. Uh, but that's, that's a bit of an introduction. And uh, I decided to um, break the project for fitting the DRO down into a number of pieces. Because fitting the scales was a different challenge for each X, Y and Z. And attaching the control, of course, and then routing the cables. They're all very separate challenges. I decided to use um, mechanical, uh, sorry, um, magnetic scales rather than um, the optical scales, glass scales, because an advantage of the magnetic scales is that they, uh, they um, you buy them at approximately the length that you want, and then trim them to the exact length when you're doing the mounting. And considering I didn't know in advance exactly how I was going to do all the mounting, that seemed like quite an advantage. Also, the mechanic, um, I keep calling them mechanical. Also, the magnetic scales are very compact, as you can see here. The um, the scale and the reed head, very very compact, much more so than glass scales, uh, I, as far as I could see. And considering the um, difficulties posed by the uni uh, the moving um, universal table and so on. I thought that the small was going to be good. So after doing a bit of research I found I couldn't get a package at the price I wanted in Australia 
and so I settled on this one from Machine DRO in the UK and managed to get it with a, a Black Friday discount as well. And before we go any further I might just comment on the um, supplied uh, mounting hardware that came with the kit. As you can see in this picture there were a bundle of um, or half a dozen general purpose mounting brackets for fixing the reed heads to the machine but I found that they were much too large and clumsy for my application and I finished up making all of my own brackets um, from aluminium stock. This is a sample of the um, one of the mounting plates I made for the reed heads. The reed head is attached to the two countersunk holes and uh, the two threaded holes accept bolts through slotted holes in the reed head bracket to allow for alignment of the head with the, the scale. Before we get started on fitting the scale to the x-axis I thought it would be a good idea to have a look at the system for the scales. So you get this extrusion and uh, it goes on um, with this as the top and uh, when it comes to fit the slide uh, the scale cover which goes around like that you slide nuts down into here and then the uh, screw fixed through the top of, through the cover into the nuts so with the way this works you drill holes at appropriate intervals that suit your machine straight through the back of the uh, extrusion and then the rest of the way it works I'll explain with this other sample you have um, this is actually the magnetic scale, a piece of the magnetic scale so you can cut it to length and it has an adhesive back so after you have mounted the um, or cut the extrusion to length and drilled the mounting holes you put it in position um, you have to um, the mounting screws that goes through here have to be countersunk and then this self adhesive magnetic scale gets stuck on in there and then um, you have a, a piece of stainless steel cover strip which gets um, slides in and lucky last you secure it all in position by pushing this piece of uh, rubber spaghetti in to hold the um, the cover strip in place uh, it's a bit hard to do with this pointer you use a little screwdriver and just force it in there but that's the system and you can see in this picture what a cross section through an installed scale looks like um, the x-axis proved to be relatively simple I fixed the scale directly to a machine surface on the back of the table using um, four millimeter four millimeter machine screws that had been supplied with the kit. With the reed head what I did there was to attach well actually there's no um, machined surface I could work with but there was a relatively flat area in the center at the back of the of the table and it was um, the surface was seven degrees to the vertical so I made up an aluminium spacer block and hand fitted it to get a, a vertical face uh, to mount the uh, reed head bracket to. So this uh, wedge was um, made from 12mm bar stock and I fitted it with three countersunk head uh, machine screws in a triangular pattern, two up and one down, so that when I, uh, I could tighten it up without distorting it and guaranteeing that it wouldn't wobble. Um, and I expected I'd have to um, put some shims in to pack the mounting face um, to get it correctly aligned but when I put the three screws in and pulled it up uh, without any shims the bracket was actually solid and in correct alignment so I left well alone. Another thing which you'll see looking at the bracket design is that the bracket is um, a two piece uh, arrangement and there are slotted holes to allow for adjustment in the vertical direction and also slotted holes to allow an adjustment in the horizontal direction so when I put it all together it was easy to centre the reed head um, vertically again on the um, magnetic stripe and then to um, rotate it as needed to get the head to be um, flat against the um, magnetic tape 
and I used feeler gauges to make sure that I had it uh, flat and parallel and the right distance away from the, um, the magnetic um, um, scale. In this picture you can see the top edge of the x-axis scale, the, the extrusion, and you can see two of the nuts which fit in a, a channel um, which are part of the extrusion and those two nuts are two of the nuts that hold the, the cover um, plate in position. And in this picture you can see the x-scale cover fixed in position. Choosing which side of the need to mount the y-scale and reed head was pretty simple. On the right hand side there was just no room. There was uh, all the mechanisms for the operating the table traverse meant it's just impossible. On the other side it was a much simpler, clearer proposition with a couple of machine surfaces available. You can see in the photo the scale was a relatively easy thing to mount on the end of the saddle. There was a machined surface there that was available. And the reed head though, even though there was a machined surface available on the knee, it wasn't easy to access. It was necessary to allow for the um, trip dog that pushes down the disconnector for the feed on the Y scale when it hits a certain hits a, a trigger point. So here's a closer look at the components of the Y axis rear head bracket. You might notice that I relieved along the centre line of the uh, mounting block to make sure that the block is pulled up tight against the two um, outer edges and is uh, therefore very stable and doesn't rock. And the complete assembly. So the z-axis scale has to fit on the left hand side of the knee for the same reason as the y-axis scale. There's simply no space on the, on the right hand side because of all the control levers. All three axes of the machine are equipped with adjustable dogs which can be used to knock out the, um, the drive for that particular axis. In the case of the Z axis, as you can see here, the drive dogs uh, fit into a, a, a channel which is cast in, into the, the body of the machine. This channel extends above and below the maximum uh, positionings for the uh, dogs so I was able to work out a way of attaching a rail to this um, feature and that the Z scale would be able to attach to this rail. The rail is a piece of aluminium bar 10mm by 25mm. I created mounting points for each end of the rail by making fixed blocks with tapped holes for 5mm screws. These blocks are held in place by clamping to captive nut plates that are inserted into the track. I drilled and tapped two 5mm holes into the knee casting to secure a mounting block for the reed head bracket. And the casting isn't uh, machined in this area and there's draft in two different directions. So to get the bolting face for the mounting bracket correctly aligned I needed to shim the bottom of the mounting block by 20 thou and to relieve the front edge by 12 thou. And those two adjustments are just visible in this picture. I made the bracket for the reed head out of a piece of aluminium angle extrusion, extrusion and you can see there are two sets of slotted holes that uh, make it easy to align the head correctly in the X and Y perspectives um, for the vertical Z axis scale. And here you can see the Z scale cover installed and um, a cap that I made to stop chips from falling down behind the cover. And in these pictures you can see the knee at the top and at the bottom of its travel in the z-axis. The supplied arm for mounting the control panel wasn't suitable for my uh, application at all. The arm was too short and the base uh, or mounting bracket to be bolted to the machine didn't appeal to me. With this sort of base the intention is that you bolt it to your machine with the two central holes and then use the four grub screws wound in or out to adjust the angle and to make it seat against the machine. Well that concept just had no appeal and I decided to make my own mounting bracket. 
I milled it out of a piece of 50 millimetre by 25 millimetre millimetre aluminium and measured the angle um, for uh, bolting for the bolting face with the machine using a digital protractor and the bracket is fixed to the machine with two bolts which are accessible through the two holes that you can see in the front edge of the, of the bracket although the bolts themselves are covered at the moment by the uh, the vertical bolt as I noted earlier, I didn't care for the originally or the, the supplied arm, the one piece arm, and I made my own two piece arm up. This allowed much greater flexibility in where to position the um, display, the control panel, but also allowed it to have much longer reach, which was uh, very important in my application. The material I used for making the arm was a rectangular hollow section steel tube. Actually, they're off cuts of fence rail, but that's by the by and um, at each of the pivot points there's a solid um, steel bush put inside the tube so that the, um, the pivot bolts can be done up tight without crushing the tube. So routing the cables was the last part of the job and um, took a bit of thought but it wasn't terribly difficult. I think you see here I managed to finish up with a fairly neat um, routing I haven't had any problems well since I've done it. There's um, some P-clips pressed into use to secure the cables in more difficult places. And one or two special brackets to keep things tidy. But otherwise, um, it was relatively simple. So we'll finish up with a shot of it all working and if you look at the DRO display you'll see that both the, um, the table is moving, moving in both the X axis and the Y axis which is a feature that this machine supports.